Hey everybody, it's Mr. B. Today's topic is about integers. But the first thing we need to do is discover exactly what is an integer. So an integer, first of all, is something that we already use all the time. So this shouldn't be anything scary to us. It's just a little extension of what we already know. For example, you know how to count on your fingers. One, two, three, four, five. Those are all examples of integers. You also know what it can be like when it's cold outside. Sometimes the temperature drops below zero, which is an integer, but it might go to minus one, minus two, minus three. Those are also integers. Now notice all the examples I gave about integers, all of those were a number, all numbers are followed by a decimal, but everything to the right of the decimal was zero, 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 zero. So, side note, all integers are in fact decimals, but they're all complete numbers. Let's check out what I'm talking about. I'll show it on the board here. So the set of integers can be written like this. We know that there's a zero point. That's the middle. Because on the other side of it, you have a positive one going right. And on this side, you have a negative one going left. Following this, you have a positive two, positive three, and so on, all the way up to actually positive infinity. We'll get into that more later. Likewise, on the other side here, would be below minus one, you all know that it's minus two, minus two, minus three, and so on, all the way, guess how far? All the way to the opposite of this, to negative infinity. To negative infinity, right there. Now, just a little note on notation. We open our set of integers with set brackets. We close it with set brackets. Everything is separated with a column, or everything is separated with a comma, comma, negative sign two, comma, negative sign one, comma, zero, comma, positive one. And when you want to show a space so you don't need to write every number in the universe, which would be ridiculous, we can just show the dot, 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 comma, dot, 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 comma, last number. Now one of the things we need to get familiar with when dealing with integers is, is understanding the principles of opposites or, or zeroing out. Now we all know that the opposite of add, the opposite of that is subtract, no big deal, right? Just like the opposite of multiply is actually divide, okay? Now we know that off by heart, so we can just keep that in our back pocket. And what that means though is that if I have this here, I have something like a negative one and a positive one, because I know that this is the opposite of this, oops, I know that negative one is the opposite of positive one. Now this matters because if I combine them together, think, combine, negative one combined with positive one, our answer is zero. Very straightforward, zero. Now we're gonna, we're gonna see a lot of zeros here. Let's check something else out. What do you think uh, negative three combined with ne uh, positive three is gonna be? You know, it's just, it's just two more opposites here. These are opposites. Those are opposites to one another. So obviously this is gonna be zero as well. When you combine a negative three with a uh, positive three, it's gonna be zero. What if I had negative 100 combined with positive 100? Obviously, the total would be zero. And just one more time, just because I love talking about infinity, if you had negative infinity at a given snapshot in time, where the universe is not expanding, it would be actually the same snapshot in time. It would actually be the same value of infinity in either case. If you had negative infinity combined with positive infinity, the total of those would also be zero. All right, so we get the idea here. What are we actually doing? What's the pattern when we combine opposites? It's just that easy. This combined with its opposite, zero. This combined with its opposite, zero. This combined with its opposite, zero. Just that easy. So I just use the phrase combined with over and over and over again to, to illustrate the point that when you put two things together that are opposite, they nullify each other, they zero each other out. But what we need to do is transfer that into the language of math, so symbol, like the symbolism of math. So what I'm gonna do is show you how that works. So here's an example on the board. Positive five combined with positive three. Now what you need to do is identify there's three elements in this, in this statement here. This would be an expression here. Um, we have this, positive five, 
And what we show that in, in mathematics, that looks like looks like that. Should be anything two out of the box here. And then we have positive three, and of course that looks like that. Right. But how do we um, deal with this? We deal with this. Oh, that's not right. We deal with this. This phrase combined with. Think when you combine something, you are adding them together. Okay. So you're adding, and that is a plus sign. Okay, so what our expression is, if we combine positive 5 with positive 3, our expression mathematically will look like this. But this can get kind of tricky sometimes. So what I'm going to do is get us started on using brackets or parentheses. Okay? So what that means is that instead of just writing positive 5, I'm going to write positive 5 in parentheses. Now that takes care of this. Now if I start at equal sign, so remember this row is going to equal the line above it. So that comes down, and instead of writing positive 3, I'm going to write parentheses, positive 3. Now right now, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to make much of a difference. But once we get into the subtraction of negative integers, you will see how important that it can be. Okay. So right now, we can just say, you know what, you got 5 bucks. The next day, someone gave you 3 bucks. You got 8 bucks in your pocket. You're good to go. So we know that the total of this here is actually positive 8. You got $5 in your pocket. You add three, you end up with eight dollars in your pocket. So we can show that by just writing eight. If we didn't, we know that it's positive eight, so we have that there. But when we have just a plain old number with nothing else around it, and it's positive, we take the shortcut because we're smart, lazy math people. I mean, that's what math people do. It's all about calculated shortcuts. We don't have to draw that anymore. So we know our answer is just plain old eight or positive eight. Okay, I'm going to move on to another question here uh, that talks about subtraction of integers coming up. All right, before we start this example using negative integers, what I'm going to do is just describe what is a negative integer again. So first of all, we know that if we had a number line and zeros in the middle somewhere, the negative integers are all to the left. The positive integers are all to the right of zero. That means any number that is negative will simply have a negative sign in front of it. Let's take an example, negative 6. Okay, we can write that just like that. Negative 6. If somebody caught up to you in a dark alley and they robbed you and took 6 bucks, your position on that day, I mean, I hope it never happens, but your position on that day would be negative 6 bucks. Now suppose you were walking down the alley, oh man, I can't believe just what happened, and you found a brand new crisp $1 bill, or if you're in Canada, a loony. You found $1. Suddenly, you take in that dollar, you combine your initial position with $1, and you know that you're only really minus 5 bucks now. Okay? So let's think about what just happened here. Kind of just created a question out of thin air. You lose 6 bucks, you find 1 buck, Technically, you're only out five bucks. But what can we learn from this expression? What do we learn about integers? It's just the same as event one combined with event two equals our outcome. We can look at that in any case. It'll always be the same sort of thing. So let's look at this. In this, in this circumstance, we're starting with a negative integer. Don't let negatives freak you out. It's just something new. Okay? And new is... We'll deal with it. So let's look at our circumstance. You have six bucks that's taken from you. So event one, you went down six bucks. You combine it with, now what did we say this meant? This meant a plus sign. And our event two, which is finding a buck, ooh, I mean, it's still a buck, eh? So we'll combine that with this, and then that equals our outcome. We know that it really means you're only out five bucks. So we already know that this is going to be five, negative five. But now we have all these extra symbols here. So all we have to do to kind of make sense of this is, oh yeah, think about those parentheses, those brackets again. This here is the same as this, negative 6, combined with positive 1. Again, the parentheses. Use them. Equals negative 5. Now, I can show you how it's going to work on a number line right away. And I'm also going to show you how it works with counters coming up. The first point I want to do is, now that we've talked about the story time, I'm sorry you had to get robbed, but I mean, I couldn't think of a better example at the time. 
we got to do the number line. All right, so here is a reasonably looking number line. And the first thing we need to do is say what happened. What happened in the very beginning of our expression? We had negative 6. Okay, so we, we started at some level, let's just call it 0, and we went down minus 6. So here's an arrow that goes all the way down from 0 to minus 6. And then we combine it with a second incident, a second event, and that was plus 1. Okay? Now remember what I said earlier, when you go minus, you go left, when you go positive, you go right. So what that means is that we have to indicate this action, this action of going a positive, going, uh, going, combining it with a positive 1, you have to indicate this action. So I'm going to look, that's where I'm going, so my arrow, my second arrow, goes from there to there. Again, there's two arrows on the number line for this expression here. You have the first one that starts at our starting point is 0, and it goes down to negative 6. And what that does is represent our first term. And then from this first, uh, first term, we look at our action, and that is this stuff. This is the action. You want to think about it like that. We're combining it with a positive 1. And when we see this here, we're adding a positive, we could say we're adding here, we're adding a positive, that means we have to go up. We already know what's going to be minus 5, that means we're going this way here. And this is the end point of our second arrow. There we Start point of our second arrow, end point of our second arrow. And that's kind of how this stuff shows up on a number line. Now, suppose you went and found a $10 bill five minutes later. I mean, that would be awesome. Found them last week. Here's what's going to happen. This is event three. Event, whoops, number three. We're just using numbers here. We're combining it with a positive 10. So we have to go from here now, minus 5, and move up 10. And let's see how far that's going to take us. Um, 1, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 5 takes us to 0. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we find 10 bucks, then we end up here. So there's our third arrow. And what that means is that out of all this ruckus that just happened, you got six bucks stolen, then you found a buck, and then you found a ten bucks, a ten bucks, then you found ten bucks, your ultimate last position, you're actually five dollars ahead. So it's kind of good that you got robbed. Otherwise, you might never have found that stuff to begin with. Actually, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I, I have been robbed before, and I've pointed. It's, it's not fun. I would rather you not experience it. Anyway, let's do some examples real quick here. If I have positive 2 combined with positive 1, easily we know that's going to be positive 3. Piece of cake, okay? But what if I had negative 2 combined with positive 1? Well, I'd be starting, my starting point would be below 0. So I'd be below 0. You know what's minus 2 degrees outside and it goes up 1 degree? We're only at minus 1 now. You're $2 in the hole, you find a buck, you're only $1 in the hole. So your answer is actually a negative integer, and that's okay. Now there's one thing that's related to this that I'm going to show you that will really make things easy. Sometimes we get numbers that are huge, and we, we have to figure out what to do. I'll show you a way using that zeroing principle that will help save you a lot of time. Okay, But it might involve a little bit of thinking here. Let's model it off of this here this sort of idea. Let's suppose we started with a negative number, uh, negative 12, okay? And when we added, we combined it with positive 17. In our minds, we might be able to already tell what it's going to be, no doubt about it. But let's think about how else can we phrase this. I want to make it easy and zero this out. I, if I don't have to think about this minus 12, all the better, right? Because I want easy. So what I could really do is rewrite this expression like this. Negative 12 combined with not positive 17, but I said I could go positive 12 combined with positive 5. I know that this is 17, and that's what we needed, right? So that way this here, this entire second line equals the entire line above it. But what we did on purpose, mind you, 
I said, I want to get rid of this. Can I find a 12 in here? Yes, I can find a 12 in here, a 12 plus a 5. But now that I have this part, let's think about this here. This is such a beautiful thing. Negative 12 combined with net positive 12, that's zero. So suddenly something that was, eh, you know, maybe we had to think about it a little bit. We could automatically say, that's zero. All I'm left with, positive five at the end of the day. Just like that. All right, so let's check this one out. We're going to do this strategy again of zeroing out. Zeroing out. Let's think about this here. 771 negative. Ugh, I don't like using negatives. 771 is an ugly number. Can I find a 771 inside of 864? Oops, that's positive 864. Can I find a positive 771 in here? The answer is yes, I can, of course. So what I can do is I can take something ugly like this, and I can just rewrite it like this, minus 771 combined with positive 771. Uh-oh. Now what? What's the remainder here? Well, before we get there, why don't we split it up with easy stuff? 800 combined with 64. Okay, I know that I can do that in my mind, but I still want 771 here. How can I split this up here? I get 780 plus 20, okay, that's true. 770 plus 30, that's also true, but I can go 771 plus 29. Okay, perfect. So I know I can split up 800 into this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go roll down here. I'll restate my entire line. Negative 771 combined with positive 771 combined with positive 29. See what I'm going on here? We can't forget the rest of our stuff. Combined with positive 64. Suddenly, we've taken something really hard and we said, Oh yeah, it just equals zero. Zero. We still have to deal with this stuff. Plus positive 29, plus positive 64. What's that? Well, you know what? That's like, I can write 29 like 30, combined with minus one, that's easy. Plus 64. 30 plus 64 is 94, minus one, 93. Positive 93. It might look long and hard when doing it on the board, but once you get the practice of doing this stuff in your mind, this is the kind of stuff that'll save you time on your exams because you won't have to fiddle around with a stupid calculator and worry about hitting the wrong buttons. Do it up here. Practice with this.